Hey, everybody. Welcome to Money Mondays. Um, I'm going to let you all come in. We have about a minute to get started. So let me wait for a few more people to get on because I know we usually have um, quite a few regulars that hop on. So I want to give them an opportunity to get their water, get their notepads, get their notes so they can go ahead and get um, started. So we can get started. Good, good, good. Let me see. Okay, I'm checking some things. Hi, Candy. I was waiting for you. <laughs> Welcome to Money Mondays. Um, you were in my Millionaire Money uh, Goals group, but so this is going to be just a refresher of something that we covered a few uh, months ago. Hi, Pat. Welcome to Money Mondays. Um, we're going to get started. I'm running a little bit behind today. I'm in the car, but I'm parked. Um, I'm on my way to get my husband, but I want to make sure I brought this content to you all like I thought I would. So tonight we're going to be talking about um, if you need $10,000, okay? Now, this is not for the rich folks. This is not for the people that's driving Lamborghinis and carrying Birkins. It's for the, the regular folks like us who need $10,000, right? I can always use $10,000. So we're going to be talking about um, do you need $10,000, what that looks like, how to get it, how to lose it, and all that good stuff. So it's not a one. Let's go ahead and get started. And then as people come on, they can um, join. Is my audio okay? Give me some hearts if my audio is okay. I want to make sure that you all can hear me clearly before I start. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So before we get started, I want to ask this question. Um, hey, Jessica, welcome to Money Mondays. Oh, hey, Rhonda, welcome to Money Mondays. I want to ask this question. Um, do you know how big the hole was that sunk the Titanic, right? So we all know the story of Titanic, blah, blah, blah. Celine Dion song, blah, blah, blah. The hole that sunk the Titanic was actually the size of two sidewalk squares, okay? Very small in relative to the size of this massive boat. And that's how I want you to think about your finances. So you'll hear me say a lot that small holes sink big ships. They actually do. And we're going to be talking about that tonight. It does not take a $5,000 setback to ruin your budget. It does not take a $10,000 blank accident, illness, job loss, whatever to ruin your budget. It's those small things that you do every single day that can help you lose or get $10,000, okay? So in the spirit of no spend March, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's talk about how to get $10,000 and how to lose ten thousand dollars because losing sometimes is more important than gaining right if you can't keep what you got it doesn't matter how much you got you're gonna lose it so um how to lose 10k how to gain 10k do you need 10k the answer is yes um most people think when they think about ten thousand dollars like when you hear ten thousand dollars you know that that's a lot of money right we've been hardwired to know that's a lot of money it's a lot of money especially especially to ev everyday folks like myself like you all it's a lot of money. And so when you ask somebody, do they need $10,000? They're going to say, yeah, I need $10,000 because I need $10,000. If you ask them if they know how much it takes to lose $10,000, most people don't know, right? And so it's those small things. It takes $27.36 to lose $10,000, okay? And I don't know about you, but all it takes is a Starbucks run every day. All it takes you can hear the car, sorry. I, all it takes is um, eating out a couple times a month, um, eating out for lunch every day, and you're going to lose that money. So when you talk about do you need $10,000, um, I want you to always say yes. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily feast or famine. It could be $27 one day, uh, $500 next week, and $1,000 next, next the week after that, and now you're at uh, 10K. So think about it like this. If you get Starbucks every day, every morning before you go to work, five days a week, 52 weeks out the year, of course, I know, you know, you don't work 52 weeks out the year, but for the sake of this argument, we're going to pretend that you do. That's $1,300. If you're spending $10 on lunch every single day, right? Even the weekends, I didn't even calculate the weekends. I only did the weekdays. Even, you know, $10 a day on lunch or dinner or on breakfast or whatever, that's $2,600 a day. If you go on one date night a month, and if you're like my husband and I, you're probably going out to eat, you're getting the drinks, you're getting dessert, you're probably going to go to the movies, you're going to go somewhere else, you're spending all this money 
a $200 date, a date night a month is $2,400 a year, right? Um, if you have a habit, right, that you spend and you're spending $200 a week, maybe you smoke cigarettes, maybe you shop a lot, maybe you're ordering stuff off of Amazon, maybe you're gambling, maybe you're eating out, maybe you're doing Grubhub, whatever it is, that small amount that, and it's not a small amount, but that small amount, that small hole is going to cost you $10,400 a year. And then a lot of people, hey, uh, Ebony, welcome to Money Monday. A lot of people uh, do a lot of food delivery, right? So they grub up and they're Ubering Eats. Um, they're doing all of that. The average person spends $150 a month on food delivery. That's $1,800 a year. So it doesn't have to be these massive amounts that you're spending all it takes is frivolous spending. All it takes is not tracking where your money is going. All it takes is not capping where your money is going. And then you look up and you've lost $10,000, right? So think about it that way. Now, who's at risk of doing this? Uh, if, you're, if you are in a cash-based business, maybe you're you know, a beautician, a barber, an esthetician, maybe you make desserts, um, maybe you do floral arrangements, maybe you sell books. I'm hitting all my people on my live. I'm talking to you. Um, whatever it is, maybe you are in lawn care, whatever it is, if you're touching a lot of cash, you're at risk, okay? If you are not tracking your spending, if you have no idea where your paycheck went last month or two months ago or in December or whenever, you're at risk. Um, if you're not capping, you're at risk. So those are things that you can look out for to help you kind of mitigate those risks and really focus on um, being intentional about your spending. So watch those if you fall into those categories. You can also, you're also at risk if you're not using a zero-based budget. So with zero-based budgeting, um, you budget to zero. Everything, every dollar has a home, you know, where every single dollar is going. Maybe you may be off, you know, 10, 15, 20, $100, whatever. But for the most part, you know where your money is going. So if you're not doing that, you're at risk. Now, if you're not like me and you have a more cash uh, or money in your hand type of money personality, then you, uh, envelope method may work for you, right? So the envelope method is where you get envelopes. You might glue them together or staple them together or get, you know, a uh, plastic one that they sell on Amazon or whatever. And there's a slot for each um, expense. So you have a slot for your rent or your mortgage. You have a slot for your car note, for gas, for eating out, for entertainment. And you put the money in those envelopes. And um, once that money's gone, it's gone, right? That's a, another way to help you with your zero-based budgeting. That's another way to help you track. If you're like me and you prefer cards, like I'm terrible with cash. I've told you guys this before. You can give me $100 and literally I will go to Walmart and be gone five minutes and the money is gone. So I prefer cards. So with me, I know that I need to track my spending using my swipes, right? I'm definitely afraid of, not definitely afraid, but I'm very, I don't want overdraft fees. So I'm tracking my swipes. And so that's what I focus on. So those are some ways that you can help you, that can help you track and help you kind of hone in on that spending. Now, you need $10,000. You, you found your hole, you know where your money is going, you know where you are overspending, where you're frivolously spending. So what do you do next? Just imagine if you take that $27 a day for the next 10 years and invest it, for the next five years and invest it, how much money that you'll have after that five year, after that 10 year mark. Um, you can save it, right? You can use that money to diversify. Maybe you've been wanting to start a business. Maybe you've been wanting to buy a house, whatever it is put that money in the stock market, whatever it is, right? Whatever you, whatever it is that you want to do, that's what you can do with this $27 a day that you are losing um, when you are not keeping track of what you're spending. Um, so what you have to do is focus on frivolous spending. So it's going to be different for every person. Um, if I'm driving down the, the street and I see a thrift store, I'm turning around, right? So that's that's my frivolous spending. That's, that's how I have to cap. That's where I need to work on. But that may not be a problem for you. Maybe you smoke cigarettes, right? Maybe you do a lot of online shopping. Find where your hole is. Let me see what people are saying. Hey, Darnell, welcome to Money Mondays. Oh, Candy has the envelope set. Good. Does it work for you, Candy? For some people, it works. For some people, it doesn't. So comment and let me know if it works for you because I would be interested to hear that. Um, okay. Next, you want to review your budget, right? So you want to know where your money is going. Review your accounts. Figure out where you're swiping, where you're spending. Find that small hole so that you can focus on 
plugging it, right? You really have to focus on that feast or famine too, because with a lot of people, you know, if you're if you're in a business where you're getting cash fast or you're you have a side hustle and you're getting money coming in, you really have to focus on that feast or famine because that's how you're going to be able to plug that hole. And then lastly, I cannot stress this enough. Make sure your budget is ironclad. Rhonda says she saw a Goodwill in Mississippi attorney. I know, Rhonda. I, I think this is off subject. I thrift in every city I go to. I found some great things. And Candy says, yes, um, that envelope method does help for you. You definitely have to be consistent. With money management, with budgeting, with saving, with no spend march, consistency is what's going to keep you afloat. It's what's going to help you be successful. But lastly, you need to make sure that your budget is ironclad. Make sure it's airtight. Make sure that you have an understanding of where your money is going so that you can plug those holes, you can be intentional about your spending, and you can really focus on saving that $27 a day, not losing that $27 a day, and then being able to build from there. Uh, for No Spend March, before we go, let's do a check-in. Um, for me, I, let me know how you guys are doing. Put it in the comments because I want to see it. For me, No Spend March is going, okay, the first week was great for me. The second week was uh, not so great. I did a little spending. Um, last week, we went out of town, so I kind of built that into my No Spend March. I knew I was going to be spending money, so I wasn't as strict as I would have been um, ordinarily. And then this next, um, well, last this weekend wasn't last week, wasn't a week, but we have two more weeks to go. So I'm really going to be intentional about saving, about um, making sure that I'm watching my spending, that I'm only focusing on needs, that I'm sticking to my $25 a week um, allowance. Boo hoo hoo, cry, cry, cry. Um, but yeah, that's going to be my focus for the next two weeks. But I would definitely like to know how it's going for you guys. Hey, Sharita, welcome to Money Mondays. Oh, Cass said she saved three hundred dollars. She spent on lunch a couple of days ago and a prayer br brunch. Congratulations! See, I'm happy for you. Now that's three hundred dollars that you can, you know, do whatever you want with, save it, invest it, buy something nice for yourself. Because I know you're always taking care of the kiddos. So good, great job. Um, that's all I have for tonight. This week, I want you to, if you have fallen off track with no spend March, definitely get back on. But focus on, um, oh, you're going to send it on Kelly's grad. I saw that. Kelly, her daughter is graduating from nursing school. So good. David told her to order shoes. And I said, that's right, Candy. Keep him on track so you guys can be accountable. Um, but let me wrap up. This week, I want you to focus on finding those small holes that you have so that you can get your ten thousand dollars right it's not it's not going to be you don't lose ten thousand dollars all at once some people do but most of us for the regular folks we're not going to lose ten thousand dollars all at once it's going to be those little tiny purchases those five dollars or six dollars 99 maybe 200 maybe three da, 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 da. but that's what's going to add up over time okay so i love you guys stay strong with no spin march find your holes plug those holes Thank you for joining. I will see you all next Monday. Have a good night. Bye-bye.